Surviving Infidelity. A fair fog is lifting from ex-girlfriend. Original post. Good day everyone. I'll try to keep this as short as possible. In November my then girlfriend of 5 years, and the mother of my 3 year old son, cheated on me. I had taken our son to my grandparents, as I always do on weekends, and she stayed behind in our apartment. She asked me to call an Uber for her to see a friend, didn't respond to my texts the rest of the day and could not account for her time slash whereabouts when I asked the next day. Fast forward to New Year's Eve, she got drunk and bragged to a mutual friend that she had banged someone on the night in question, someone I know. The mutual friend told me, and I was livid and told my ex to pack all of her stuff and leave the apartment. When I probed about the infidelity, she said she had no choice but to cheat because I had grown distant and she felt I didn't love her anymore. She has moved back to a friend's place to sort herself out and I currently have our son. I am devastated. She is unemployed, got retrenched recently, near homeless and has no idea when she'll get a job. She's asked if I could buy her monthly plane tickets so she can come see our son until she finds a job, but I'm against this. We've blocked each other everywhere except WhatsApp, so she can video call our son, but I am terrified about what happens next. I am a mess and she seems to have thoroughly moved on. Which is fine, whatever, but I fear for what happens next with our son and how we'll co-parent successfully. If she doesn't get a job in the next few months, she has mentioned the possibility of taking our son back and I'd send some sort of a stipend to support the both of them. Really looking for any advice, how to heal from the infidelity and how to successfully co-parent. Now for the top advice before reading the updates. Nope. She left. She emotionally abandoned you and physically abandoned her child due to her cheating. Do not financially support her in any way. Let her get a taste of what life without you will be like. Do not be her safety net. Most importantly, get a lawyer and go to the courts for full custody for your child. Seconding this. Get primary custody. Look to your parents or grandparents for help. She's absolutely out for herself and is happy to milk you for all you're worth. If she cared for her kid, she wouldn't have done what she did. I have vacated our apartment and I'm living with my parents for the next month or so. Just really afraid that if lawyers get involved, she may say, look there's a vacant property me, my mother's child, and my son could live in. No choice but to cheat. That's how you know it's done. She doesn't understand how choices work and doesn't make good ones. When she talks about getting back together, it will only be for financial reasons, she's already shown she can't be a reliable partner. I said the same. She asked if she could stay for a month and look for a job, but I refused because she's still in contact with the affair partner. She simply refuses to block him. Taking your son back and you paying child support my butt. Lawyer up and demand full custody now. She cannot afford the kid and left him with you. She wants to use the kid as a meal ticket, so don't let her. It's difficult to accept this, using the kid as a meal ticket, but my parents have said the same. I think I may still be a bit naive slash stuck in the relationship. Little update. Spent 5 days in the psych ward. Don't know if I'm getting better or if the urban owl is just zoning me out, but I feel better than when I last posted. An update, I got this message from my ex today. Why are being so cold when I text you? I just want to know when we can forge a healthy co-parenting relationship. One where we both hate each other but we can act normal in front of our child and be cordial to each other. I haven't responded. Before that, she asked if I'm feeling better and that she hopes I heal. Not too sure how to respond. Son is still with me and family, and she might only be back in two months. She's still crowdsourcing money to get an apartment. How do I respond to this? Before this, we only ever spoke when she wanted updates on our son or if she wanted to talk to call him. That message threw me off a bit. And now for the update. So the mother of my child cheated on me, got drunk and blurted it out to my friend. She moved out in the beginning of Jan and has been couch hopping with friends since then. I currently have our son and have been living as a single father. Custody still being sorted. I don't know whether this is a rant or an update. It's just so weird to see how quickly the affair fog evaporates. She was all hope and arrogance after she cheated on me, changed her appearance and, in the first few weeks of couch surfing, kept reminding me that leaving me was the best option for her. Well, now the reality is sinking in. A fair partner distanced himself from her after finding out she had a partner. She's still unemployed, and she hasn't seen our son in three months because she doesn't have the means. Funny enough, I always prayed for karma but I honestly feel sorry for her now. 
Her friends have told me she is s idol and she has admitted more than once that she shouldn't have cheated. I don't know how I feel. Definitely not happy she's getting her comeuppance. This is just such a sad situation. The thing is that she doesn't regret you or out of her life. She monkey branched and it failed. Now look how her life has changed. She used to live in a house with you and you were taking financially care of her. And now she has nothing. She has no money and needs to sleep on couches. That's why she is saying she shouldn't have cheated. You shouldn't feel sorry for her. Do not take her back. She made her bed now she has to lie in it. How much sorry or guilt did she feel when she was bragging about cheating on you or when you were initially broken up? None. So don't feel sorry for her now either. You can wish her better because she is the mother of your child, but that's it. She doesn't deserve anything more than that from your part. Sigh. I hear you. You're making perfect sense. I think I'm just feeling a bit crappy because this affects my son too. I don't think she feels sorry for leaving me. She drunk called me a few weeks back and said she needed to leave because I was no longer kissing her, touching her and what have you for a few months before the cheating. I tried to explain that I was under so much pressure as the sole provider for a house of three. I know deep down that she just regrets losing out on the comforts of being with me, great house, financial security and the opportunity to look for a job at her own pace. But it still feels weird to see her suffer like this. My therapist said it's good that I feel the way I do, it shows that I'm not a sociopath. But at the end of the day this is her problem to fix. It's a completely human reaction to feel empathy and sorrow for her. It's no surprise that your emotional bonds with her haven't completely dissolved. The only people who can switch it on and off it will are robots and narcissists. It just shows that you have a kind soul and a big heart. Just make sure she can never take advantage of your big heart again. Whenever you feel your willpower slipping, and whenever you feel like you need to help her and protect her, repeat these two sentences in your head. 1. Never light yourself on fire to keep someone else warm. 2. Not my circus, not my monkeys. I know it sounds harsh and callous, but you have to remember that this is an issue of your mental health versus hers. At some point you have to look out for number 1. You always have the kindest words. I hear you. Part of my posting this was to hear what I already knew deep down, I can't and shouldn't help. Dude she went out of your tent in the rain hoping for someone else's umbrella while flipping you the finger. Now she is all wet and miserable looking at you like a puppy. You owe her nothing, certainly not after she bragged her cheating and showing no remorse at all. If anything, you deserve better and when she sees that better next to you, the train will hit hard full force. She is just beginning to feel the aftermath of her affair, wait till she comes crawling back for forgiveness. Please don't be the doormat to take her back, because then you deserve what is coming for you. Because then you deserve what is coming to you might be the kick in the backside I needed, thank you. Now for the last story. I found out my husband cheated on me with strippers and I feel dead inside. I, 31 female, found out two weeks ago that my husband, 30 male, slept with a stripper last year, January 2020, at a bachelor party. We have been together for 5 years and married for almost 2.5 years. I am also 11 weeks pregnant, so not a good time to find out my husband is a liar and a cheater. We have both said we would never cheat and that cheating is a deal breaker, whether it be emotional or physical. Our hatred for cheaters was something we bonded over when we first met. My husband has never been cheated on, as far as he knows, but his father is a serial cheater so he sees the grief it causes his mom, and he hates his dad for it. He has also lost a lot of respect for his mom for putting up with it. She refuses to leave him because they have been together since they were 15, and are in their mid-50s now. The only two relationships I have been in before him both ended with my boyfriends cheating on me. So after five years of being together, and seeing no red flags, I finally saw one three weeks ago. I met his new receptionist. Pretty, blonde, early 20s, wearing a top that showed a lot of cleavage, despite what some like to say, it's inappropriate to wear revealing clothes at work, especially considering all five men that work there are either married or engaged. Her clothing wasn't a red flag, but it was her attitude towards me. She was cold and a little rude, and I caught her watching us several times while I was there. She seemed annoyed by my presence. It was the first time I visited him at work since she was hired in November. He owns a small business with his best friend. I told my husband that she was clearly crushing on him, and he laughed and said that he thought she was crushing on his business partner instead. His partner wasn't there so I didn't see her with him. So the next day, I decided to snoop through his phone while he was sleeping. We know each other's passcodes, and we do have an open phone policy. I rarely look through his phone, 
but the few times I have, I never found anything. I also have nothing to hide, so I have no problem with him looking through my phone either. I found her in his contacts, and only two text messages showed up in their history. Both from her. They were from December saying that she was going to be late for work. Nothing inappropriate. He doesn't use social media. No inappropriate photos. There wasn't even adult materials in his safari history. But his group chat with his friends and brother was a whole other story. I have known about their group chat, but all the times I used his phone in the past, I always avoided looking through it. Years ago, my brother told me group chats with the boys are usually filled with adult materials, bragging about all the women they are cheating on their partners with, and objectifying women, and I did not want to see that so I just hoped my husband and his friends were different. Well nope, they aren't. What I saw made me sick, and it actually made me throw up. I found out that my husband did cheat on me, not with his employee, but with strippers at a bachelor party last year. Based on the texts, he was drunk and had intercourse with one of the strippers, and got a b-job from the other. Not only did he cheat on me, but most of his friends, who are either married, engaged or in serious relationships, cheated as well that night, and are basically serial cheaters, or desperate for intimacy with other women. They have a serious problem with adult movies and lusting after women that are not their partners. The groom also had action with two strippers that night. The bachelor party was at a strip club, and then they all went to the only single guy in the group's house with the two strippers. I didn't even know they went to a strip club. My husband has said that he doesn't like strip clubs, and he knows I am not comfortable with him going to them. The guy's fiancé, now wife, said no to strippers. They told all of us that they were just having a boys night in. So, they have been lying to all of us for the last year. Since we started dating, he has been to two other bachelor parties, so I have no idea if they went to strip clubs during those as well. When it comes to his receptionist, he does think she is freaking hot, but he is not sleeping with her, and never has. She is in fact sleeping with his married business partner whose wife is pregnant with their first child. But they joked about having a threesome in the chat, and his friend bragged about how hot the action is, but not wanting to share her. They all pretty much brag about all the ex they are having with women that are not their wives and girlfriends. The chat is filled with adult stuffs, pictures from only Fs, Instagram profiles of girls, comparing girls looks, talking about all the things they want to do with these girls, actual memes, etc. It's basically 90% sex related. They talk like a bunch of 15 year old single horny teenage boys, not 28 to 33 year old men in supposedly committed relationships. One of the guys is getting married in May and they are planning on hiring more strippers and they talked about screwing them too. Like what the hell? One of the guys posted a picture of my husband and I in the chat with the caption, show me a beautiful woman, I'll show you a man who's tired of sleeping with her. They all seemed to find that funny. My husband's response was, ha, I'm not bored yet. Who did I marry? Who are these people? Why are most men such trash? His friends and brother have always been nice and polite to me, they seemed happy and in love with their wives and girlfriends, but obviously it is all an act. I took lots of screenshots so I do plan on telling their partners but I am really dreading it. So a little backstory. Before meeting my husband, I was single for almost 6 years. Like completely single. I didn't date at all, I was celibate, except for one weekend fling and one one night stand. I really love being single and not having to worry about being cheated on. At times I was lonely and missed intimacy, but for the most part, I was really happy. I hate hookup culture, so casual intercourse is not for me. I have always been an introvert and a homebody. So I was perfectly fine with being at home and not going out. Because of my previous boyfriends cheating on me, I didn't want to go through that again. I was convinced that most men cheat if given the opportunity. Every guy I knew was cheating or wanting to cheat, but afraid of getting caught. Which is not a good enough reason for me to not cheat. My dad's wife cheated on him after being together for 7 years, so he in return cheated on her. They're still together, but are miserable. My brother and his friends were cheating on their girlfriends, some of them would try to cheat on their girlfriends with me. Lots of married men made it known to me that they wanted to sleep with me. So, it all just made me depressed and seriously think very lowly of men. When I was a teenager, I loved the attention I got from men, even married men. I didn't really encourage it, but I still liked it. Then my ex cheated on me and I started to really hate the attention I got from men that were married or in relationships, so instead of it making me feel confident and beautiful, it just made me feel horrible. I am a firm believer in leaving a cheater, so that's what I plan on doing, but I am so depressed and angry and shocked. I don't believe there are any valid reasons to cheat, but if we weren't getting along or not having intimacy, 
then it would make a little more sense. But we do get along, we are best friends, or so I thought, we have a great intimate life, and have action pretty much every day. So it just doesn't make sense. I still love him, but from the moment I saw those texts, it was like a lot of the love I had for him went away. I really thought we were happy, and since finding out I'm pregnant, he has been so excited. Lockdown and quarantine had been great for us. So, I am having a hard time wrapping my head around his cheating and the way he talked in that group chat is going to give me nightmares. I have not confronted him yet. A couple days after I found the texts, I went to stay at my mom's. It was a planned trip. Those two days being around him after I found out were really hard. Just looking at him made me sick and angry. He wanted to have X, but I had to tell him I wasn't in the mood, which is weird for me because I am always in the mood. Going years without it has made me constantly crave it, which he knows and loves. I blamed my morning sickness and am still using it as an excuse. I was only supposed to stay with my mom for three days, but it's been two weeks and I am still here. My husband is not happy that I am still here, so he is coming tomorrow. I told him not to, and that I will be back home next week, but he is not listening and will be here in six hours. I am dreading it. My mom lives two hours away from us. We have talked every day since I left, but I keep the conversations short. He asks me what is wrong and I just tell him that I am nauseous. I haven't told my mom what I found out. Only person I have told is my best friend, who lives in Florida, I'm in Canada. She is the one that told me about this sub. A small part of me doesn't even want to confront him, and just wants to act like it never happened. But I feel weak for feeling like that. I am embarrassed of my family finding out too, like just last year my brother was telling me all guys cheat, and the ones that don't only don't because of lack of opportunity or fear of getting caught. I mostly do agree with that, but I also think there are some good, faithful loyal men that don't cheat because they don't want to. They love their wives slash girlfriends and don't want other women. I said my husband was that kind of guy. What an idiot I was. I know it's immature, but I wish I could just ghost him, like go and move all my stuff out of our condo and then never talk to him again. Obviously, I can't do that but a huge part of me wishes I could. I just can't stop thinking about him doing it with someone else. It's consuming my thoughts. I've only left my mom's condo once since I've been here. I have no motivation to do anything. I've just been sleeping a lot, and reading. I can't even be happy about being pregnant. My mom is very excited, and I have to pretend that I am. I do really want to be a mom, but knowing what I know, I can't stop thinking about the future and dreading it. My husband will be a great dad, but I really wanted my child to grow up in a loving home with both parents. But I can't stay with him. I have always been against staying with a cheater because of kids. I hate thinking about having to watch him move on and date and eventually get married to someone else. I just know I will be single forever, and that makes me sad. Sorry this was so long. I just needed to rant. Now for the top advice. I'm so sorry to read this. How incredibly painful it all must be. In my own experience as a man, 39, what I can say is that no, this is not common among all male groups. What's happening here sounds totally abnormal to me. I have far more friends who are totally loyal than I have friends who cheat. So, just know that if slash when you leave him, you'll be able to find a good man, they're out there. And I agree that when the time is right, you should reveal it all to the wives and partners, perhaps in a group email, or some other form that will allow you to have some distance from the blowback. But if you're the only one who knows, I think you owe it to all the women to reveal what's going on. This might lead to you needing to establish a new base of support, perhaps it will help you grow closer to some of these women. Maybe it will create distance between yourself and some of the toxic, male, influences. It will be a big ordeal, obviously. You can do it. I can't imagine the level of pain you must be in right now, and I wish you the best through this process. It will get better. This is what surprises me the most. I have a few group chats that are all guys and were friends from various times in my life. One chat is literally my four best friends from the Air Force. No adult materials, no BS talk like that. I thought we were normal and talk about politics and plans, and sometimes a funny meme, I'm usually the liberal one in the chat. Why the hell would I want to talk to people about intimacy with my significant other? Why would I want to hear about their intimate lives, or be there? I don't get it. Yeah, I've never discussed intimate details about a spouse or girlfriend because I don't want anyone else to know that about them. That's for me. They weren't discussing their intimate lives with their wives or girlfriends, it was mostly other girls and what they have done with them or want to do to them. 
And that's it for this video guys, if you have thoughts to share, leave a comment below. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you like this content. I'll catch you in the next one. Good day everyone.